Hi, it's Mia. Hello, YouTube. I am taking a break from some paperwork that has to be done. It was due today, and I was going to drop it off in person, but I forgot to, so I'm preparing this package to send as a fax, and um, I just, I don't know. Sometimes paperwork takes a really long time to fill out or doesn't take too long but if you forget to send it in the mail or whatever it takes too long and the last time uh, like three times I delivered this in person and it got lost and then I was penalized for having it late you know turn, turned in like a month late well they weren't even turned in I found out that they weren't turned in and then I found out they were never received and then I was penalized. Um, I let's see. It's it's like a quarter to eight where I live. About close to one my time. I found out about this Boston Marathon um, explosions, and it's kind of creepy. I in my current city, I just worked a marathon. Um, for the medical team, I'm still a medical school student, naturopathic medical school student, but we worked under the direction of a physician, naturopathic phys physician, so we were able to take in uh, anyone who was injured, or there wasn't really, well, there was a guy that was injured, he was covered in blood, so there was some injuries, but a lot of it was dehydration, or, um, just dizziness, um, uh, somebody had he had like over 300 blood glucose he's type 1 diabetic and um, yeah anyways we had a few the EMTs administered the IVs they wouldn't let us the students do it we're doing that in class right now administering IV therapy and I did the first week and I made a mess. And the person who got messy was wearing a white sweater. But she knew how to get the blood out. It wasn't that bloody, but the napkin where I was doing the whole thing was. So that's pretty bad. Um, but the second try, it was fine. So, <clears throat> anyways. I, um... I heard about this Boston Marathon thing, and one of my friends is a runner, and she just did the half marathon yesterday. Um, she lives like an hour or two away from me. I don't know. I never really met her in person. <laughs> like, you meet people on the internet, but that's been common for me to meet people on the internet since 1992, or 1994. Yeah. I went to Michigan State University, and they, we had the internet, and there was MNET out of U of M, and it was... Supposedly, some of the creators were still at U of M, uh, University of Michigan, where I visited. And it was weird because that was the first time I'd been to a campus that was, like, there was, like, buildings and stores and McDonald's, and then there was, like, campus buildings, and then there was houses. And at Michigan State, it was just two miles of solid college between, what was it, so if I can remember, Hagedorn Street, there was that street called Hagedorn, and the other one starts with an H. I can't, remember. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. This was a really long time ago. But yeah, I, um, I heard about that explosion. I was kind of freaking out. I should have been paying attention to the teacher. But I get grumpy between, like after 40 to 45 minutes of instruction, I start getting grumpy, and my mind's like, dude, like, can we get up and walk around? Come on, come on, come on. And I, and I mean, I'm trying to tell myself, pay attention, push yourself. You don't have to just shut off and be like, okay, I'm just going to check my email. You're supposed to be paying attention. So I need to be better. But my mind's like, you know, no, nope, too bad. If you want to go an hour and a half, nope, it's too bad. I'm not going to listen, but that's going to only affect me. So I need to be better. But I found that out and it was kind of nerve wracking because... I had just worked a marathon, and I understand how, at the end, how crowded it is, and 
how many people are there. And it's just like they keep saying. I mean, I watch these old reruns on TV, these old cop shows and about the first responders going in after something and then another explosion happens and then they're injured. I don't know. The Nobody, if anyone on YouTube is watching the news right now, if you're on the East Coast, it's like quarter to 11 out on the East Coast. And it's sounded like, I don't know why the cell service was down in Boston, but, uh, I mean, this is horrible. To ha you know, a little kid died. I don't know. I mean, it, there's people that lost limbs. I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know who did it. And I know the news is, like, trying to make it dramatic and re-showing the same shots. And uh, one of the guys that sends emails, a virtual trainer, he ran the marathon. He was fine. There's some other people from my local city. So far as I know, they're fine. And then my running friend, she had a bunch of people that she, she had like a list of 10 on Facebook that, that ran, um, that were all accounted for. So, it's just something that's, I believe in God, and I believe in the Bible, and I believe in Jesus. There's a lot of crazy stuff happening, and I watched that whole series, Left Behind, basically, um... I didn't read the books. I watched this, the three movies. And basically they show, you know, it, it all the drama begins when all of the Christians and kids get sucked up to heaven and disappear and all, everyone else is left. And I just, I mean, it's like, I just watched um, somebody's prepping video because that's what I do when I'm stressed out, I guess. <laughs> Either that or I, I just think about stuff or, I mean, I don't know. I allow myself to be stressed out and make excuses. It doesn't matter why I watched the video because, I don't know, I turned the computer on and it was recommended. That's why I watched it. But um, they had a security system set up <clears throat> off the grid, which was nice because I know a lot of people that had, like my relatives that live in Ohio, they had the power outages. Did they have two power outages this year or last winter? I don't remember. But they, you know, people were locked out. People had home security systems and keypad entries and stuff. And they were locked out of their houses. And, I mean, I don't know if people had to break the windows or, you know, go to neighbors' house, houses. But, I mean, I see those ads they send. You know, oh, you can get this $99 installation. What it cost you? 500 and $39 a month. You're like, ooh, that sounds cool. But this, this guy... um I'll put it in my comments. I guess everyone knows who Southern Prepper One is. He, he was talking about one, my off-grid security system, and I liked it. I used to make little ones like, I mean, I didn't make what he had. I wasn't really paying attention because I was trying to do my work. But when I was a kid, I used to do those little Radio Shack little, they're like the little plastic grids. They don't sell them like they used to where you take the wires and you build a little thing and there's like a hundred things in the book that you can build the complicated ones the easy ones they always had sensors they always had like the ones where you have the wire across like your window or your floor and if someone trips the wire you know and it disconnects the alarm goes off and I remember the ones where they had uh like a, you know the ones that are one light here one light over here and you know if you step through it and break the connection I think, yeah, I think it was actually a light. I think it was a light and a sensor. So if you break a connection, the alarm goes off, and then there was other ones. I don't know. This is stuff I used to do when I was a kid, but I, I miss having that little set because it was kind of cool. It's like something you could actually use in your house, even though it was a kit for t kids that had, like, a 100 different things you could make. It was kind of cool knowing how to make it and put it put it all together. I've got some of those kits for my kids. A lot of times, it falls apart, or we lose all the pieces, or we just plain you put you spend a lot of time putting this stupid thing together and it falls apart. Or we had like a cool solar power one where you made a bunch of stuff and you had fans and light bulbs and stuff, uh, and also I think had motors and battery options. 
I think half that got thrown away. I, I had people help us clean. I mean, that stuff's kind of cheap. You can just rebuy it. But it was kind of cool, even though it wasn't as good as the stuff from when I was a kid. It was still kind of cool. Those are some of the things nowadays. Things are so junky. It's like, oh, maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll actually work when I put it together. But I think they don't really... I don't think they really design it to be a quality product that... Like, the thing I had was this plastic thing that I used for years and years and years. Um, but, yeah, I like the idea that the guy had and having the um, walkie-talkies set up with it. And, I don't know. Like I said, I didn't really watch it. But even having it, having an alarm go off when somebody comes onto your porch or in your, say, your gate or something. Because where I live, it's owned by the city. And they will come in your house without your permission. Um, they may or may not knock first. So certain times when I'm home, it's like, I don't want to be in my pajamas. You know, they, I don't want people walking in. And it's and it's really against the law. Like, re it really is against the law. And then so many times I come home, there's somebody in my backyard. Or there's no one in the backyard I found people in the backyard <laughs> without permission. It was like someone spraying pesticides, which I don't care for pesticides. But like several times this week, my gate to my backyard was open, and if, nobody's supposed to be in there. And if they're supposed to be in there, they're supposed to give us a notice on our door 24 hours beforehand. They don't. They don't do it. Um, occasionally they do, and I have a feeling. What happens the last couple of years, the boss, not the boss, the manager's boss will come around, drive through the neighborhood and walk up and down the street. And so we live in like a house, but it's a rental place by a regular management company, which is actually owned by the city. It's really confusing. It's the only place we could find to live. Like I already have videos out about racism and about why do they charge, if you live in a place that's owned by the city, they charge you twice as much rent for a place that's in a less desirable location than a place 10 minutes 10 minutes from downtown is not really it's not considered downtown with the skyscrapers but you're within 10 minutes in driving in traffic from downtown those places cost several hundred dollars less a month than my place uh, some you know a lot of them have garages and um, it's not too many basements over there that the houses I've been in actually there are quite a few uh, basements in that neighborhood huge yards Lots of creeks and streams and quiet streets and parks. But yeah, in this this place, they will come in and out of your house and your yard without you really knowing. A lot of times, they're not coming in and out of your house, but they do just walk in. They will just walk in without notice. And they might knock and say, like, maintenance or something, but they should have let us know. Most people here don't work. They're home all day, and there's a whole bunch of people living in one house, and, like, the moms typically stay home, and the dads typically stay home. It's a couple, two or three cab drivers. They're out, usually in the middle of the night. And then all these people have between four and ten kids, so there's most likely there's a teenager or something at home. So it's like someone can knock and say, oh, can I come in? I got to... I got to, I don't know, do maintenance or do, they're doing construction. And so many times this week I've come home and, um, not this week, this year, I've come home and my back shed is, it's not a shed. Here's what you do. You go to the backyard. Here's the kitchen. You go out the kitchen door and you turn directly right. There's a patio where I have like, I'm growing a bunch of my own food. I'm not growing as much food as I would like. And even the stuff I do grow, I get paranoid because I forget the people spray. How do I know that he's not messing with me and spraying my organic plants? But I try to make use of growing as much as my own, of my own food as I can. I have my patio stuff, which, you know, it's just not starting to grow because it's spring here. And then there's a shed, which is actually an outdoor closet connected to the house. So in the ba I think from the bathroom downstairs... And adjacent to the kitchen, there's like a outdoor closet, only accessible from the outside. And 
I have like a bike my friend gave me. She couldn't even give it away. It was something about there's some some shock absorber or something on it that they said they couldn't attach a bag. I don't know. She tried to give it to bike shops or sell it. Nobody would take it. It's kind of a nice bike, but um, you can't really ride bikes around here. You have to drive somewhere. My uh, friend gave us a bike rack, but he took it back. So, um, so we haven't been biking. Anyways, um, I had like my toolbox, the tent, the Christmas tree, and then some various, you know, just normal household items that you don't want to store in your house. And so many times I've gone out there and it's wide open. It's either actually wide open where I don't want like mice and stuff getting in there or it's just a jar. It's like, dude, nobody told me that they're going to come into my shed and leave the door wide open and the lights on. There's like, I think there's, is there two or four light bulbs for the switch? And I didn't put the light bulbs in there. I usually do like 40 or 60 watts. So who knows? It's probably... 100 watt light bulbs so it's like why did my like like oh somebody was in my shed and two weeks ago and they left the lights on the door is wide open and my electric bill just went up 10 bucks <laughs> for the month because they left the lights on for 24 hours it's really difficult as i watched this guy's video i was like oh i should put up some sensors so the kids would know that somebody's coming on the porch so that instead of hiding on the couch or in the downstairs closet, or like someone walks right in, they knock like once or half a time, and they are in the house already with a key. My kids like hide in their couch. My son was doing that once, and the guys were downstairs for an hour or two, and he was hiding underneath a pillow and underneath a huge blanket, and they were like moving all my stuff, trying to access a window. They, I had like a little set of two drawers with a printer on top and they were putting all that stuff on my son's legs and my son was just like not moving not making a noise and letting them pile this junk onto his legs and feet I'm like oh my gosh I mean it's stupid but I, when people say you know without order or without rule or having the government take over stuff that that's what's happening to me already so I just wanted to tell people that I have reported things against the lease that they do, but it's like, they could get me on anything. They could get me because one of my trash cans in the bathroom didn't get emptied, you know. I had a place where they said you had to sweep and mop every day, and your trash had to be emptied at least once a day, and, you know, if they catch you, ooh, you didn't mop today? Oh my gosh. It, like, they can catch you on stuff and evict you, and that would be a horrible way to be evicted and not be able to rent another, another property. So, eventually... I'm I'm scheduled. I want to say I don't want to say suppose. No, I'm scheduled to finish medical school in a year and a half. I I just wrote this huge business plan that doesn't really incorporate my real plans, but I'm like, hey, this is the closest to simple as I can make it because when you still have two years before you get your license, minimum, maybe I mean two years is like for some people half of your whole education, but whatever. Things fall into place, and I, I, for the past eight years, I wanted to buy a house. This the city actually was selling fifty or a hundred houses and homes, just basically houses. There's usually three bedroom. There's usually one bathroom. The neighborhood that my kids go to school, and I asked my dad, "Can you help me with this?" And I don't think I was being serious, but they were maybe half or a quarter of the price of the houses in that neighborhood. Um, I mean, someone could buy and sell that thing. I mean, it would be worth waiting a couple of years to get a tax break. I mean, that, that's stuff I learned from business classes and from Dave Ramsey and from books and stuff about real estate. I mean, for us, Rye rent an apartment for a thousand bucks a month when you could just buy a house for eight fifty <laughs> and then have it, you know. Even if you're paying the same, if you add the property taxes in for the monthly payment as well as the insurance and set aside emergency fund on a monthly basis, you know, right away. I don't know if if people, you know, you have to do, sometimes, you know, you can get that through the bank where they automatically store it, usually for, for direct deposit. 
But, I mean, I always think of these things, but I don't ever do it. Or I ask somebody or a family member or friend, like, no, it's a bad idea. So now that I'm a couple years, less than a couple years from graduating, it's like I realistically am not sure if I'm going to stay in the city. And until I know, I need to not buy a house. And until I know, um, I think I'm on a month-to-month lease here. I feel this is kind of not like me. I usually move every few months to a year, year, two years is max. I've lived here longer than I've lived anywhere in this town. I've been here about 12 years, but well, more like 11 and a half, close to 12. But I feel like in, if I want to buy a house, I need to make sure that I want to live there for seven years. A lot of people, lots and lots of people I know, they just buy their house and they're like, okay, now I got a raise at work or I saved more money. I'm going to buy a second house. They don't even try to sell their first house. They're just like rental. And then they come back and just do the upkeep and paint it and find renters and fix it up and all that stuff. So I'm in a position right now where I will be, as far as I know, sole proprietor of a medical practice that I'm going to uh, be renting. And my income, not, well, my income will support my rent from where me and my kids live and the lease of a potential property. Um, and then it'll also consist of any other bills, including student loans. So I'm in a position right now, just hang on tight for another couple years and rent. I mean, I feel like I could have saved a lot of money by not renting because I worked out the mortgage calculators. I actually worked out that 15-year and 30-year loans from the bank I was looking at were not, there wasn't much of a difference. And there might have been 100 extra dollars a month that you pay, but that's 15 years of less interest that you pay in a 15-year loan. I mean, it, this stuff varies all the time. It depends on your credit um, ratings, all that stuff will factor in your down payments of course and but when I added it out with the calculator I was like I'm pretty much I'm either paying like you know eight nine a thousand or eleven hundred dollars a month for three bedroom two bath or one and a half bath thirteen thousand square foot house with a huge yard and a garage and a driveway near a nice neighborhood or in a nice neighborhood so you'd be paying say the average just bump up the price you'd be paying twelve hundred a month on a 15 year loan and be paying 1100 a month on a 30 year loan. So yes, like a lot of people would be like, well, why, why not pay a hundred less a month? But it's like, wait, you're talking 15 more years of payment. You could be done in 15 years and go use that money to buy a vacation house or save it or send your grandkids to school or, you know, buy a camper or, you know, a motorhome or something or donate it to a church or something, you know? Or the fact that someone in 15 years, depending on their situation, will would be retired and potentially have a less of an income depending on how they plan for a retirement one way or another. I feel like when you're not at work at school all day, it's really easy to spend money, which I found out. It's really easy to go to movies and not really easy. Go, go on vacation and stuff. Like, you use that money somewhere else. I am not a financial expert. I just take classes and rent, um, borrow books from the library and watch DVDs and stuff about business. And I haven't really had a chance to prove myself in any of those business ventures. But I figure right now I might want to move to a rural area. I might want to move across the country or across the world. And I don't really feel like, I mean, I think some of it is, a lot of people I know are just like, boom, we're going to buy a house. Boom, we're almost out of school, let's buy a house. We have some sort of income coming in, let's, in a down payment, let's, or a co-sign or whatever. Um, I've talked, I, I don't want to, I've talked to relatives and stuff lately about, Maybe about two, three years ago, even considered again buying a house. I had been enrolled in a program that was supposed to help me save ten to twenty thousand dollars, and there was supposed to be a matching program too to add to it. And it all fizzled away. Any of my money is gone, lost, and it kind of sucks. 
I mean, they didn't let me do the matching program, so luckily I didn't add a whole bunch of money out of my pocket to it, but their program was set up to help divert some of my rent money to housing in it. They were, oh, wow, I can't believe... I should have had like a whole bunch of money in the bank for down payment. And that was the program to help you be self-sufficient and um, as you're working towards your career and stuff. So it's really, I mean, I'm, you know, a lot of people will complain and be like, why don't you be self-sufficient? Go get a job like everyone else. But it's, it's been very difficult with being a single parent and having had been home. Go, when you end up homeless sometimes, this isn't everyone, but when me and my kids end up homeless because of abusive relationship with my ex-husband I was married to for 10 years it was an emergency and we were left with pretty much for me the clothes on my back literally um, I don't even know if I had socks I think some of the socks I had now they were good quality socks too I got from a free pile somewhere and I don't really typically like to use use socks but we had pretty much the clothes on our back and some food a friend had given us. Um, one day when we went to her house, she had given us some food and a bag of cookies that were she had made a whole bunch of stuff. So I found it difficult when you're in those situations, when you're moving all the time, when you're in chaos, trying to scramble to be a single parent after being a stay-at-home mom and scrambling trying to get a job. I'm not saying, I mean, I, I feel like, the other day, I felt like, man, this is why people complain, because I'm like a deadbeat or something. But then at the same time, I'm like, oh my gosh, I was scrambling. I mean, I was living in a homeless shelter, and I was working. I was working before I went there, and I was working after. And it wasn't enough to rent an apartment for me and the kids, not even a studio, but it was something. And then I got, before when I left, before I left my ex-husband, he was watching the kids, because I was working in the evenings, while he worked in the daytime, so... It became a little, I mean, I was driving to the next county to drop the kids off at people's houses from church, and it was taking me as much time to drive, or twice as much time to drive, drop them off and pick them up as it was on the job that I was working part-time, and then the gas money and all that stuff. So uh, I feel like it's busy work, and I, people will make a lot of comments about people that had to have help from the state or had to live in these um, homeless shelters and it was temporary, like six weeks, but I still ended up homeless after that, transitional housing. So it's kind of, you kind of think, I don't, I haven't lived in anyone else's body. But right now, I've lived in mine, and I've been working my fingers to the bone. <laughs> and I'm not really good at time management, so I'm not bragging about this being busy all the time and working and, you know, I'm studying all hours of the day and night now. Now that I'm getting closer to the end, I'm I'm just falling asleep with the notes in my hand and waking up in the middle of the night with the notes in my hand and I'm like, turn the light on, I gotta study, gotta study, gotta study. Who cares if I'm supposed to be up in two hours and actually get a good night's sleep? That I don't think that's healthy. I don't recommend it to anyone, but I, it's getting to the point where I gotta do what I gotta do to stay afloat and to do well. And to not be any borderline. I don't want to be borderline anymore. I want to be up here where I know I'm doing everything I can. So right now, I'm still dealing with the grade issue. And I'm still dealing with the missing grade from one of my classes. I should probably print the email so that everyone knows that I that the teacher gave me a score. I didn't get this test back in the mail or anything. But I should probably print it. You know, sometimes you think, oh, what if you accidentally, like on my phone, you actually do something it's like, oh, you just deleted a whole bunch of stuff. Oops. So, today's lesson is I had a death of a teacher slash supervising doctor at um, my school slash clinic. <sighs> he died on Friday of a car, or he died on Thursday of a car wreck. We found out th uh, Friday afternoon during class. And I freaked out and left, and I dealt with diversity and judgmental stuff. Based, a lot of minorities are being made to take this re remediation class, and I'm one of them. And I feel like there's not really any reason, but I'm finding out. It's like when they made Sesame Street for minorities. 
they found out these kids didn't have TVs, so it was the other kids who had the TVs and lived in a nice neighborhood watching it, and they ended up being more smarter than the city kids were even worse they were already above and then they end up being more and it's smart to someone's standards if they tell you to learn book a and you learn book a you're considered smart in their standard but the people maybe in the city that learn street smarts and how to keep from being ripped off and to protect themselves from bad guys that that's a whole another level of smartness because that's keeping them alive and keeping their family safe so it was a major issue and I ended up at school five and a half hours on Saturday, and it was crazy. Race, race, race issues, and I said, you know, fine, this is like Sesame Street. They're going to teach us a bunch of stuff in depth and help us practice recalling things and help us practice for our exit exam. So how c you you got to practice for the exit exam and do this stuff anyways on our own. Now I'm being forced to do it, so whatever. And then Sunday there was baptism at the church, and I was late because the kids were all like crazy. And and then we hear about this bombing at the marathon. It's almost surreal. I'm I don't want to say I'm getting desensitized, but I feel like I kind of am, and I don't like it. So right now, in my mind, it's just do my work. This month has been crazy. The spring break was rough. I need to just start taking care of myself. I haven't even... I used to weigh in every day and go to weight loss group every week and then weigh in on the Wii and uh, calculate everything that I ate on my fitness pal, and I haven't done that in so long. Oh, my gosh. I, I was at least weighing myself every Sunday, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. This is scary. I'm I'm better when I weigh myself regularly because then I notice when I lose... when I gain weight that that stuff I was eating was actually affecting me, and that it wasn't just my imagination. Oh, I just shrunk my pants in a dryer, yeah. So, I'm praying for all the families. Um, I told myself I wasn't going to even use the word prepper at all, but I, I know that some of us on YouTube share common views, and people have a lot of knowledge. I just used that term because... When I found out what it meant, I found out I was kind of already doing that stuff just because where we grew up, we had a lot of instances where the power went out and we were in a rural area and there would be uh, mad amounts of snow in northern Michigan when I grew up. And, you know, you'd kind of be stuck somewhere until you could figure out how to snow blow your driveway or whatever. whatever. Kind of, I mean, sometimes that would, I mean, if you got like three feet of snow overnight, it, it takes a little while to get even, it takes a little while to go out. We had a garage out from the house. It takes a little while to go out to the garage and find the snowblower, let alone even open the door to the garage to get out there. That, that's a lot of snow. I and mean, we'd have drifting snow too. We lived on the lake. We'd have really high drifts. And we'd had, we had like a wall. I'll say this and I'll stop. We had like a, a long driveway that went to the garage, a long cement like driveway, and then towards the side it, it kind of tilted, not tilted, but it went around to the side of the garage, and there was a wall at the very end of the driveway. I, I mean, I almost feel like it's almost like close, not a city block, but it's it was a really long driveway. You would have like this little ramp. I call it a ramp. It's like a curb. It would start off like two or three inches, and then... When you got to adjacent to the garage, it would be like, was it like three feet? So I would do this thing as a kid when it would drift up and snow mad amounts. I'd walk. You had to walk like from the main road down a dirt road, turn to my yard, which was a couple acres. I mean, it's extended since then because they bought my parents bought land across the street in the woods. Um, but you know, it's like directly across the street. It was just kind of nice actually walk through the yard, and then I'd play this game about, because once you're in the yard, you, it's even, but you know, by the time, somewhere along the lines, you're going to get to the edge of the wall, the retaining wall or whatever, and it's going to, like, drop down, but I just, I kind of miss being a kid, and just what you think is interesting, it was interesting for me to fall into four feet of snow, while I walked home from the school bus. But I'm probably, I mean, I probably only did it once. I was probably dangerous. It's like, 
end up breaking your leg or like stepping on a wood pile or something. Those are the good old days. I don't even think it snows that deep anymore, and I don't even think my kids have seen snow that deep. But, but yeah, I just, I loosely don't want to sit, use the word prepper, but I enjoy watching all of you guys' videos, and I just, I feel like even the simple, like, where we live here, they're going to be building a Walmart, like, a few blocks down the street, so it's like, they already talked about utilities being shut off and stuff, and we've had this plenty of times where they've shut the utilities off, shut the electricity, you know, over and shut off between 2 and 12 hours, we've even had it in my apartment. Or in my house, I call it apartment. They put a letter on the door that said, we're going to cut your kitchen off for like one to two days. And they also had one, we're going to cut your uh, bathroom lights off, or the one where the shower is, for one to two days or more. And we're not going to tell you when. And I've had, I I will get these, I've got them most, multiple times. Like, serious? So... I get home one day randomly, you're going to have my kitchen blocked off, you're going to be doing construction, I won't be able to access my food or my refrigerator or even the tap water or dishes. Or So I felt like before I even knew, heard of that word prepper, I was like, okay, someone gave me a cooler and I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I went and got the other cooler and just started putting salads and got the kids snacks and then like, well, the strangers are going to be in my house at some random time, my kids are home alone. So then I was putting up bags of food in the room, little snacks and non-perishable things. And even simple stuff like that. And all the stuff they're doing where I live, I feel like it's control of a state or a city or local level of government has control of my home and what they do to it with or without notice, including shutting off your power or including closing off your kitchen, uh, making it inaccessible, and or shutting off your lights in certain areas because they said they, they're going to shut them off and not turn them back on for multiple days. So they're like, can't you just take a lamp and extension cord and put it in the bathroom? And I'm thinking, like, bathroom, bathtub, water all over the place, extension cords on the floor. I'm like, I think I will just... Luckily, there's a window in there. I'm like, I think we'll just wait till daylight to bathe or not be, you know, that day. Especially when these people come in your house. There's nothing like needing to get dressed when there's some strange dude upstairs right outside your bathroom door. It's just creepy. And they're, like, coming in and out with ladders, and you're like... You know, they always say maintenance people are... Oh, I'm from the gas company, and they show, like, some badge or something. They always tell you, ask for the badge. If you don't feel comfortable, call the company. They don't do that here. It's just like, there's some dude that just walked in your house... And you're about to take a shower at 7.30 in the morning. Huh. I have no idea who you are and you don't even introduce yourself and you don't even tell me what you're doing. I and mean, it's creepy. And that's why you think I'm paranoid. It's like, how do I know they're not putting, like, cameras in the house or something? Like, I mean, there's weird stuff going on with all the vents. There's, like, weird insulation and weird stuff coming out of them. I'm like, I don't know what they did. So, anyways, that's my little vent about not having control having this desire to own, but feeling like I don't... I mean, I bought a house before and paid cash for it and sold it for, like, nothing. But I feel like, in my mind, it's a desire to be more self-sufficient, but there's some, I don't know, from past abuse or something telling me, you don't, you can't handle it. And I need to get over that um, little crutch. Because realistically, I'm being a fool by paying more money than it would... The only thing is, if the roof goes out or the plumbing goes out, I can contact someone. There's no guarantee that if you contact your housing that they don't blame you. I've had that happen before, too, and then they try to charge you. I was like, I didn't even do anything wrong. So that all comes into play. But um, usually in the places I've been living, they, they're pretty good at checking the stuff. And if they find something wrong, they're pretty good at fixing it. And, you know, and Something else, if you, if you have a hole in the wall, because... You dropped a chair. I mean, that's different. But there's no, like I said, they come in and out when they want. Who's to stop them? So, ending, rewinding, walking in deep snow, snow dress, and falling down on a ramp because it's fun. Oh, so does I miss Beatty Kid.